Welcome to the Inside Startup Investing Podcast powered by King's Crowd. As always, I'm your host, Chris Lestrino. From discussions with founders and VCs to industry experts and special guests, we want to provide you with the inside scoop on all things startup investing. Whether you're investing $50 a deal or $500,000 a deal, we have the stories you need to hear before clicking invest. From the metaverse to spaceflight and beyond, join us as we explore the world of startup investing for all. And now, on to this week's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Inside Startup Investing Podcast. Today, we have a little bit of a different episode for you. I am joined by our very own Leah boulier getro Senior Investment Research Analyst at King's Crowd. Prior to working with us, she worked for Stanford's accelerator, StartX, helping to select the most promising entrepreneurs, and also led the first award-winning study on the Malawian startup ecosystem. In her free time, she volunteers to help entrepreneurs in Cameroon, Brazil, and Colombia, and holds a degree in anthropology from France. And I am extremely excited to get into a super hot topic with her today, which is impact investing. This is an area of deep passion and interest for Leah, and one she tracks very closely here at King's Crowd. So with that, let's get into it. Leah, it's so nice to have you on today. Hi, Chris. Thank you for having me. It's very exciting. Absolutely. So Leah, before we get into it, I would love for you to just tell everyone a little bit more about yourself and and what kind of drew you into having so much interest in the impact investing space. Yes, as you just said it, um, at King's Cloud, I'm writing every month on impact investing. Our investors can really take a look at uh, all the new companies that are raising online and that really have a positive impact both on our environment and on society. But prior to that, as you said, that really is the experience that I had in Malawi that really brought me into impact investing. It's For those who don't know, it's a country with one of the lowest um, GDP per capita in the world. And what startups are doing there is that they are building efficient and tailored solutions to the local issues. And it's something that charities really are not really able to do efficiently and sustainably. So it really changed my perspective. And I just decided to focus the rest of my career in that area. For now, it really has been a lot of fun. It's fascinating is really to see how the threats and the difficulties that we are facing are just a source of amazing innovation and ideas. So very happy to be continuing that conversation with you. Terrific. And I, you know, I know that impact investing, it can mean so many things. And frankly, it is a broad category. So let's get into that a little bit. How do you define impact investing? Yes, it's really an investment approach more than anything else. Um, it's really a, across all asset classes, geographies, um, all across all industries. And what really matters in impact investing is the intent that investors have. They really want to have a positive impact that is explicit and measurable. It can be impact on social equity, access to housing, access to quality food and water, which is kind of the basic that we need for a society, but it also can be on the protection of the environment, um, on reducing our greenhouse gases that are responsible for climate change. And it's really important to say that impact investors are looking for a return. They want a return that is comparable um, to other sectors of investing. They're not, it's really not about charity. And it's also different to ESG investment. In ESG investment that we mostly find um, on public, uh, on the public market is more about not doing harm that really impacting. And so investors really want to do good, really want companies that have for their core mission to really solve environmental and social issues. That's really interesting. I, I like that distinction of ESG is, hey, I'm not doing anything bad. Impact investing is not only am I not doing anything bad, but in fact, I'm doing some real good to push the world forward. Um, I love that. I, I'd be interested. I know that the IPCC report, um, and some might not know about that, but um, have made some of the recommendations that have been made about how to finance and fight climate change. Um, can we talk about some of the insights that have come out of that report? Yes. Um, for those who don't know, the IPCC is a body of the United Nations that really studies climate change and gives recommendations on how to act. Their last conclusion is, unfortunately, pretty alarming. We don't have much time to really limit the negative impact that we have on the planet. But the good news is that finance and investments can really make a difference. And so this 
several ways that we can make a difference. The first one is, well, to invest simply into climate related companies and to cut our investment in fossil fuel related uh, companies, organizations, et cetera. And it's not only about um, increasing the amount of money, but expanding it also to lower income countries, to lower income populations. These are countries that also have an impact that also are polluting, but don't have really the capital that is necessary to solve the issues. And it's up to us to, um, to help them. And same thing, it doesn't mean that we have to give up on the return. Actually, these are countries that are developing at a rate uh, that is way higher than the one we have in Western countries. Climate tech is also growing. And if you kind of want to look at the future, cutting fossil fuel investment makes also sense because we expect in the future regulations that will go against these companies. And what really the IPCC shows that is interesting and even more impactful and that this investment can have a ripple effect. They can really raise awareness in population and in decision makers. And so the question that I was kind of left after reading the report is, Increasing, yes, but by how much, right? And so there's a few studies out there and they kind of all agree to say that we have to grow investment to four to five trillion dollars every year. This is huge and this is about six times what we are doing right now. So there's just no time to, to wait for it. You know, I, I, I'm not as in tune as you are in thinking about some of these underdeveloped countries that are growing at a really rapid rate and do have issues around pollution and what have you. I know a lot of times we think about greenhouse emissions and things like that that are tied to cars and energy. Um, but in some of these developing countries, are there other sources of our climate challenges that you're seeing that need to be solved in countries like that, where maybe the infrastructure of vehicles isn't as large, but they actually have other sources that are causing issues as well. Definitely, as you were saying, vehicles, cars are a huge source of pollution. Um, I've had much of the chance to go in Ivory Coast, and what happened is that the car that we don't want in Europe, in the United States, we send them in these countries. And this is causing harm both to, uh, both to health, uh, to the population, but also to the environment. There also is a lot of issues with plastic. Um, in many countries, plastic is either burned directly by people because there's no really waste management system. It is thrown away into rivers and it ends up in the ocean. These are examples of issues that we have to find, but something that is important that we have to solve these issues with the population. We can't just go and impose our own way to do on them because they also have their culture, they also have their own government, um, and they need to be actors of this change and really understand the importance of it. But they cannot do it without capital. They cannot do it without primarily solving access to quality food and water because this is their day-to-day -day challenges and that needs to be solved before they can think on the long term. So we need to be spending trillions of dollars a year <laughs> to, to fight some of these challenges that we're facing. For people who are interested, they now have an opportunity to potentially get involved and invest in some of these game-changing companies. So in terms of the online private markets, right, the world that we focus on day in and day out, uh, when you look at some of the stats from 2021, uh, what are some of the numbers that you saw as it relates to social impact investing? 2021 was really an amazing year for social impact investing. Uh, every month we had about 20 new deals that were out. Um, and all the deals actually of the year in impact investing represented about 22%. And what is interesting is that 28% um, of all the capitals that was invested online went into this deal. So we really see that investors were more interested in two impact investing than other deals. Actually, they, the average check size um, was of more than $1,000 for social impact investment, while it only was of $880 for other deals. Um, so investors really went into it. That's amazing to see. And in total, we had about close to $100 million that went online into impact investment. And this is twice what we had in 2020. Um, Another amazing thing that we just saw, there's a new platform that arrived on Kinscrad. It's called Ignite Social Impact, and it's 100% dedicated to social impact. So there's a growing interest, and the data really speaks for itself here. Wow, $100 million, 22% of the total dollars raised went into deals with social impact. Um, I think it does speak to this trend that I, I think we're all seeing um, of people wanting to invest in things that are going to make a difference. And frankly, just the urgency with which we need to do those things. Um, 
and you know, I always say for for people who are you know not excited about the impact investing space or don't care and are just hey, I want to make a buck wherever I can, and they would do it in oil and gas just as much as they would in clean tech. It's like there is a lot of money to be made here. This is actually a transformational period where you can do exceptionally well while helping to solve some of the planet's major issues. Um, and speaking of those issues, I, I'd really like to hear from you. What are some of the areas that you're most excited about in terms of impact investing? Yes. Um, just to go back on um, the previous answer, if that wasn't really clear, the 100 million are actually 28 uh, percent of all the, the money that was invested in impact investing. So it's it's really huge. Um, in terms of areas, I'm really excited about sustainable energy. We see a lot of solar companies out there. It's actually an area that is pretty mature, but there's also a lot of high-tech development that are being made, whether in green hydrogen, fusion nuclear energy. And these are things that are really crucial to fight climate change and entrepreneurs are on it. Um, another thing that I really like is the food and agriculture area because it's a critical one to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Sometimes is quite overlooked by investors. Um, Reforestry, for example, is kind of overlooked sometimes, but it can be impactful. It could also bring returns, and there is a few companies that are targeting that point. And lastly, when we're talking about low-income population, low-income countries, it's also an area that I try to look at. Um, these companies don't have to be environmental focused if they are operating in low-income countries. They can just bring help by, for example, Giving, poly, uh, giving finance tools to populations. It really can be simple things that can help this population. And this is what is exciting about it. That is one of the things that I, I've kind of learned over the years. You know, I am definitely guilty of being a meat eater, um, but seeing how much methane that does produce and and it actually can be uh, quite detrimental and, and almost as impactful and, and negative as, you know, the cars that we drive. Um, and I had no idea. So seeing some of this you know, agriculture technology, even things like, you know, beyond an impossible burger, where you go, you know what, if this can help push us in the direction of producing less meat, which does really lead to these elevated levels of methane and putting gases into the atmosphere that can be very negative. Um, that's so interesting. And it's not something that you necessarily think of because you think of it as food. Well, it's, it's something that grows. How could it, it's not man-made, it's not manufactured. So why is this bad? Uh, but it is pretty incredible to see what a negative impact that can have. It's great that we talk about Beyond because Beyond actually started raising uh, online. They, before the IPO in 2018, they raised about $5 million online, and then they went on this incredible IPO in, in 2019. So Beyond is a good example. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. They were on our crowd back in the day, and you could have gotten into Beyond when it was very much not worth billions and billions of dollars. It might have been worth tens of millions at the time. Um would love to hear from you. A couple of example of companies that you're excited about kind of in this impact investing space. Yes. Um, these are mostly companies that are raising right now that we are seeing. Um, I've seen, for example, Jewel Case arriving back in November. They are doing stackable portable batteries um, that can also be charged through solar panels. And what I really like about this company is that back in November, it was really mostly for homeowners and music, music festivals. Right now, they got into electric vehicle charging and they really have demonstrated that it can expand their market uh, tremendously. That's something that I really like. If we go back to the food and agriculture sector, I really like Hempitecture. They are close to raising $5 million right now. And what they do is that they use hemp to produce insulation panels. So not only do they stock carbon in insulation panel, but they also really help reduce housing energy consumption. And that is a critical sector. Um, finally, there's a company that we also featured uh, one or two months ago on our article is Bose Bikes. Bose Bike is bringing safe electrical scooters into equity zone. So not only they are bringing sustainable transportation, but also they are bringing it to people that have lower income and that usually are kind of left on the side by comp traditional electric scooter companies. So they are kind of having two amazing impact um, at the same time. Wow. And where can that company be found for investment? It can be found on Kingscribe. <laughs> and then do you know what platform they're raising on? Um, I think that might be with Founder, but I have to double check that. Got it. Excellent. There are certain things that we look for 
uh, in every company that we're assessing at King's Crowd, things like market size and the founder's experience and the terms of the deal. Um, but when it comes to impact investing, are there certain things that are kind of unique that people should be looking at and thinking about before making an investment? Yes. The first thing I want to say is greenwashing. There's several companies out there that are using kind of a lot of green on their platform and the world sustainable several times, but investors really dig a bit and ask themselves questions on the impact. They can figure out that um, they actually have more negative impact than a positive impact, whether on that on the environment or in the society. Um, so this is something to look at because impact investment is not standardized. There's no way right now to verify except a good diligence on companies. Um, investors also have to look at the cost of the product that are offered by these companies. Often the cost is more expensive than other products, and that can be okay because consumers really have told us that they're willing to pay more for sustainable products, but that still can be on the long term a drawback on the market. Um, another thing investors have to look at is the risk. The risk either because uh, they are investing in high technology that is not really proven yet. Uh, there's the example of nuclear fission that is promising, but we don't really have um, result that we can we can make money on right now. And there's also a lot of lack of awareness of consumers for new products and alternatives that companies really have to overcome. So that's another thing uh, that they have to look at. And then overall, even if investors want to focus on impact investing, they can still stay diversified, as we were saying earlier, in terms of industries, in terms of geographies, in terms of the problem that they are solving, it's important to still uh, diversify their set. You know, I, I love that because there really is, um, and I do think people need to be aware of it, when you're investing in things that are... Um, you know, changing what I kind of call clean labels, right, on consumer goods. Um, clean label adoption takes a long time. I would say longer than traditional product innovations. And a perfect example, uh, in my, my first job out of school, we were helping a company diligence the opportunity to create, you know, kind of organic deodorants and shampoos and things of that nature. Um, and it was funny, we did all these consumer surveys, and what we found is, while at that point, about a decade ago, people wanted to see clean labels on food, when it came to their, you know, their packaged goods for things like deodorant and shampoo, they didn't care yet. They were like, eh, I don't really see the benefit. And it's kind of funny to see literally within the last 18 months, that market has completely exploded and we see all of these brands pouring into it. But there is such a thing as being a little too early to market. And this is certainly a space where if you come a little too early, you might prime the market, but you might not capitalize on it. Um, because it does take people a while to kind of want to adopt these new things and maybe make them a little bit uncomfortable, but ultimately in time become kind of the mainstream. Exactly. Yes, that's that's a great example that you're giving. Uh, that industry is booming right now, but before people didn't really know, not only that it has an impact on the environment, but they're on their own health. Um, so it's one of the trends that we're seeing. And there's a lot that are starting right now and that it's it's also a good investment opportunity, uh, but it can also be a failure. So investors have really to be careful with that. One area that I, I'm uh, interested to hear from you, you know, sometimes it's really hard to get people uh, to change their behaviors and it's really hard to get vast, large industries to change their behavior. So there's obviously a lot of investment and a lot of new technologies coming out trying to solve some of these climate problems. Um, but what can we do beyond that? Is there regulatory reform? What other things do we need to see happening in order to really make sure that we push forward uh, and do take care of some of the challenges facing us today? Yes, as you're saying it, regulations will have an impact on the way not only companies, uh, but also investors do things. Um, and I know that sometimes it might seem kind of contradictory to the idea of free market, but it really doesn't have to be. Both really can go together. And a good example is that recently the SEC proposed to mandate U.S. companies to disclose not only the risk that are related um, with the businesses, but also the climate footprint. Climate change will have an effect on company. Climate change might close some companies' businesses, but also some companies participate in climate change in a way that we don't obviously see it. Um, for example, data centers. We think that 
everything that is digital is kind of cleaner because it doesn't use paper, et cetera. But data center that are storing our emails really use a lot of energy. And these are the things that we don't see it and regulators can help us do that. So if the SEC proposal really goes through and is implemented, that would be a revolution and that would be a very useful tool for investors. And I know that these are things that are also kind of um, being developed all over the world on a global scale. So this is something that investors really have to follow. And another thing is we ask consumers do have an impact on what we do. The money that we spend um, is listened to by corporations and we can also change our own habits. And it can be little things as using less plastics. You just say it and I I know it's difficult, but eating slightly less meat. Um, It doesn't have to be everyone has to be vegetarian, right? But if every single one of us cut 10% of our meat consumption, then the entire planet cuts 10% of its meat consumption. It's it's already one step. Um, so we really have to go little by little. We can do it as um, as a society. And everyone just has to really think twice, I want to say, every time they consume, every time they invest, they have to think about the impact that they are having. You know, before we wrap up here, uh, you hit on something, data centers, for instance, I know that they take a lot of energy and, you know, all of our computers, the internet, everything somewhere, there is a room full of servers that are helping to manage all this stuff. And they they use a lot of energy. And then you go on Google and you see that it says that they've been carbon neutral since, you know, 2014 or something like that. Uh, I know that it's becoming more controversial and people are starting to speak out about it. What are your feelings on this whole idea of, you know, you could basically pay to offset your carbon footprint. Is that net positive or is that really just hiding from the truth? That's a very good question. Um, if, if we go back on data center quickly, the impact is so because the electricity right now that is produced on the United States, it made 20% out of coal and 40% of the natural gas. So 60% of the electricity that we produce in our country is non-renewable has a negative impact. So that's why everything we do kind of electricity based has an impact uh, and really emits greenhouse gases. And in terms of of setting carbon, this is a good thing. This is one of the solutions. But I remember reading an article recently saying that there's just not space enough on the planet to plant trees in order to offset our greenhouse gas emission. It's just physically it's not possible. So yes, this is a way because there is things we're still going to pollute in some way. We still have to try to stop carbon in some way, like we were saying earlier, hemp protector is doing. Um, but we have also to drastically reduce our consumption. So yes, this is a good thing, but there is a limit and this may be used as, I want to say, the last option. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. Um and, you know, for those who are listening, we've already hit on it, but just as a reminder, we're seeing anywhere between 20 and 30 deals and practically a little over the quarter of the market that's out there today in terms of startups that are raising capital via all of these online exchanges um, are socially impact driven. Uh, and you can easily find those on the King's Crowd website. If you go to our company search table, uh, we have an area where literally one of our filters is social impact. So if you're looking for social impact investments, it's really easy to do on King's Crowd. You can sort and filter on that and find all of the active companies that are raising capital in this space um, so that you could start making investment towards the things that you care about. Uh, to that point and thinking about the future and making investments into the future uh, that could kind of better our world. Leah, from your perspective, what gives you hope as you look to the future, as it relates to our climate and society? I know there are a lot of inequities and challenges, but where is the silver lining that excites you? The first thing that really excites me is how newest generation take this issue seriously. Um, Before the pandemic, if you remember, there was huge marches all over the world called Fridays for Future, where young people really were demonstrating and trying to raise awareness of decision maker um, into climate change because they know that this is going to impact their life. We also saw in the United States movements such as Black Lives Matter uh, that are really raising awareness as well uh, into social inequalities that, that we are facing in our country. And that demand for action really brings me hope because this is something that the population is more and more aware of. 
And another thing is the more I spend time on online equity investment opportunities, the more I see that the space is large, that there is a lot of resources, there is so many innovations. This is very exciting for anyone who is interested in the space. Um, they can really spend hours and hours just researching, looking at new companies, looking at resources. There is also a lot of venture fund that are now either specializing into uh, climate tech, into impact investing. Either we have a so larger fund that are having that are dedicating part of the capital to that area. So this is something that is happening. I kind of want to say either we um, do the first step and we solve the issues. Either the climate issue will catch us and we will have to do it at some point. So let's start now. We certainly can't hide from it. I, I definitely agree with you on that. And I do think this is a really unique moment in time where if you start investing in these technologies, you can not only be a part of a major change, but frankly, it's the birth of an industry, right? The, the climate technology industry, the social impact industry, um, there's a lot of opportunity for investment upside as well. Uh, I think it's a really, really exciting space. And thank you so much for your insights today, Leah. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for bringing the topic. It's very important and it's so exciting. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Inside Startup Investing. Before you go, if you enjoyed the show, please give us a like or a positive review on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And be sure to like and share our latest episodes. And if you like what you heard and want to learn more about how we can help you manage your startup investing search, diligence, and management at King's Crowd, check us out at kingscrowd.com. Thanks, and until next time, happy investing.